Let's call this regular city council meeting of December 20th, uh, 2018 to order. Please call the roll. Who's Here. Bergeron? Here. Zingy? Here. Isa? Here. Flora? Here. Kiefer? Here. Gage? Here. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Brings us down to public hearing on resolution number 18 2716, adopting the budget for the year 2019 uh, appropriations from the general government fund for the physical year 2019. Is anybody here to speak to that resolution? Seeing none, we'll close that. Moving to the next one public hearing on resolution number 18. 2717, adopting the budget for the year 2019, appropriating from the Ketchikan Public Utilities Enterprise Fund for the physical year 2019. Anybody here to speak to it? Seeing none, we'll close those and go into communications. We have some laid on the table, and some of them have actions. Um, in accordance with those, uh, first one is the budget update number 35, no increase, uh, rate increase 0.8%, and there's action required. We have a item number tonight, is that right? It's under committee, okay. So we need a motion. Your Honor. Yes. I move the City Council amend the 2019 general government operating and capital budget to include a 0.8 mill rate increase for property taxes levied in 2019. Move. Second. Second. Discussion? Hearing none. Your Honor. Yes. Mark. Just maybe more so for the benefit of the folks who are listening in on this and concerned about it seen some comments. Um, I'll be brief, just a few data points. Mill rate hasn't increased in six years. This rate increase combined with the proposed other rate increases that we're going to be discussing shortly comes out to about $38 a month for a household in a $400,000 tax assessed house, less for those in a house that's assessed less. We have 22 open positions in the city of Ketchikan that we're trying to fill. We have two generators that are 50 years old. We have another generator that's 43 years old. We have one that's 21 years old that actually is probably one of the lesser reliable units. And on and on and on. My point being, while unpleasant, at least I've come to the conclusion myself that uh, asking folks to come up with another $38 a month to help maintain and improve their own infrastructure, I think is in their best interest versus kicking the can down the road and finding out later that the increases will be greater. Thank you. Okay. Well, I certainly appreciate and respect uh, the council members that are supporting this motion. Um, I've had a chance to think about this this week, and I'm not going to be voting for any increases anywhere in the budget. And the reason is, is because, you know, I've, uh, I've sat through a few budget processes, and Mr. Coos and I have sat through some on the borough that were hard and painful. You know, where's the pain in this budget for us? You know, where's the big cuts? Where's the deep cuts? The only pain that we're inflicting is on the people that we represent. So... <clears throat> With that being said, um, you know, I, I guess we should have gave, or I, I should have brought a motion for, you know, more direction on a leaner budget. But you know, I'm uh, I'm seeing a lot of folks out there that can't afford what we're charging now, and I see a, uh, I see a, uh, the way that we build for our utilities, like people that live in an uh, efficiency apartment or paying the same basic fees that somebody that lives in a big house and has obviously uses less of those things. So I see some inequities there. I also see us <coughs> um, 
as a community subsidizing our cruise industry. And I think that we've done that. Uh, I, you know, nobody at this table can say that we haven't contributed beyond what the port has done for that. <clears throat> I think that it's time for us to find a vehicle for um, those fellows to step up and help pay for this. Uh, you know, that's, so I, I just wanted to let everybody know that my vote for all increases are going to be in the negative today. That's all I have. Thank you. Anybody else? I agree with Mr. Bergeron when it comes to the tourism industry, and I've been saying that for two years. I, I, unfortunately, I think it's a, a separate discussion, hopefully one we're going to have soon, but I agree with that part. Absolutely. Thank you. Anybody else? Please call the roll. Coos? Yes. Bergeron? No. Zingy? Yes. Isa? Yes. Flora? Yes. Pfeiffer? Yes. Gage? Yes. That passes six to one. Moves us on to um, budget update number 36, and that is informational in regards to where the summary is uh, with the changes that have been made in the budget. And then uh, the other lay on the table, we have um, budget eight, update number seven under the KPU uh, budgets. And that's the proposed rate increase for the electrical and water division. That is. We have a motion, please. Is it seven? So, are we yeah, doing seven or are we doing seven? Your Honor, I move the City Council amend the 2019 Kitchener Public Lands Corporation and capital budget to include a 3.5% electric rate increase for all electric rates except the contract rates and a 5.5% increase on all water rates except for the seafood processing rates. I have a second. Second. Then move and second it, Dave. Um, as was mentioned earlier, um, we've got some really serious electrical issues, um, infrastructure things coming up, and the farther we can get down the uh, the, the pike, the more expensive it's going to be. And last I checked, our utility rates were still significantly lower than virtually anywhere else you can you can talk about. So we're uh, we're, we're raising them because we have to. Anybody else? Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody at this table really wants to raise rates, and I totally, completely understand how everybody feels about it because I'm right there with them. But um, unfortunately, we're at that. A position where it wasn't done for years and years, and now we're having to make the hard choice. So, um, thank you. Unfortunately, <laughs> anybody else? Seeing none, please call the roll. Gage? Yes. Typher? Yes. Flora? Yes. Isa? Yes. Thingy? Yes. Bergeron? No. Who's? Yep. Uh, six to one also. Leaves the budget uh, update number eight, which is another summary of the reserve uh, informational. And then uh, nine is um, KPU revised resolution and information. We'll take care of the budget updates. Um, when I went back earlier, there was uh, nothing under persons to be heard. Is there anybody else that signed up at this point? Uh, if you can see. B3, request for uh, a new business item 73, exempting the procurement of the uh, Grabner MK7 oil mist uh, detector OMD system for the from competitive bidding. Um, and written quotation requirements for the catch can mist. So I need four hands to put that into the square four hands. Okay, we'll move that uh, 73, I guess. So we're 
we got to put it in the yeah. okay. underneath it. Okay, so we'll move that to Ketchikan Public Utility New Business um, 7B3, right? Okay, mm -hmm. got it. All right, sorry about that. Back to person to be heard, Spencer. I thought maybe I was here for public comment, but it's persons to be heard, and I didn't really understand. I'm probably being inappropriate again, but I'll make it kind of brief. And it was, it was kind of a general statement tonight. Uh, I figured most of that budget stuff is already figured out, and this vote's a bit of a formality. And then it seemed like uh, it's an opportunity for all the council members to explain to everybody why we're going to raise those rates. And I, I hear a lot of I hear a lot of scuttle around town about th this whole uh, subject, and uh, we're raising the rates, like you said. I think I think when you say there's no other answers, there's no other available answers right now because we didn't do anything ahead of time. Um, that's been my my biggest push when I'm uh, running for a seat up there, is to create revenue somewhere else. This is an old trick. It's been done over and over again. We haven't raised those electric rates to fix those infrastructure things because there's no money to keep taking. And uh, uh, you can't keep going with this approach. Those infrastructure things are costing more than you can keep raising and get. Uh, there was a, a cruise ship industry that's brought here, uh, which which kind of opens up another can of worms. Uh, when when we talk about those those uh, head tax dollars, and that's become problematic. That's why it's so important for us to do our job to make our own money from that cruise industry. Uh, the city's had a real hands off approach from the beginning to kind of kick back and tax the people and take from people when when we prosper from the industry that'll never work uh, the city has to step up to be the economic driver if you don't want to make these hard decisions again in the future and for example uh, we could tax those cruise ships for sales tax um, I talked about this during my last run and uh, that the, the Disney boat put in a remittance of those taxes twice at the beginning of the summer, and our borough gave them back because we're one of the only places that doesn't charge them a sales tax. So while you're raising rates on the local, you're skipping the very fundamental thing that you're supposed to be doing with the cruise ship industry, which is make a competitor that comes to town pay their fair share in taxes. But you've uh, exempted them. Uh, when I looked at it before, I'll cut right to the chase. You guys go check it out with Glenn Brown at the borough, and you'll find out that there is money out there waiting for us to ask for it. When I found all this out, because other places get the money, Juno gets the money, you can look at their records and find out exactly how much of a pot is sitting out there. But it's just easy and quick to look at rate hikes and mill rates and stuff we've always done. That's what we've always done. But we got to look for new ways. Um, tax those guys, even if it's waters on the boat when they're there. I kept my store alive on waters. And my guess is if you can get in there and tap their $6 waters, you can keep this town alive on them as well. So that's, that's one of the first ways. I also thought a lot about a seasonal, a revolving seasonal tax, and you probably have to implement something like that because we have such a feast and famine economy. I wouldn't come out and call it a tourist tax and attack people. I'll call it a seasonal tax that's adjusted by our revenue. And see, there's no revenue in the winter. That's the beautiful thing, actually. Because if we lower the tax rate in the winter and give the people some relief, I mean, really lower it, it won't hurt us hardly at all in our coffers because we're not generating any money anyway. 
if we lowered it all the way down to say 1% starting September, I think actually October 1st, and then we ran it all the way to April, where we ran it to 10.5%, and you go, holy shit, excuse me, 10.5% is the rate that Seattle's at right now every day. People roll in there, I don't know how many times I've paid it and never even thought about it, but once thought about, it's 10.5%. Well, people roll in here all day long. I just went on vacation to Florida. I never once asked, hey, what's the tax, buddy? I just paid for it. And so that's how we start to generate money from outside sources instead of generating it from here. If people are paying 1.5% on their diapers and stuff, um, that's going to save them and give them some real relief in the wintertime when we don't have any money coming in. That's the kind of stuff we have to do. Now, once we, we right now, we're, ta we're tapped to only getting as much money from them outside sources as we can stab out of our local. That's keeping us down if we do something revolving. And you're going to have to talk to Mitch Seaver about all the legalities of it. But plenty of places have fluctuating taxes. It's just the way we have to do business because we live in a place that's like that. Um, my last and final suggestion is to find better information for making our decisions how we how we shape this town. We're embarking on something that's brand spanking new to us, but I've come to realize there's plenty of other people that have done the very same thing that we have. I, I kind of started down a trail of saying, hey, look at what Fort Lauderdale did with their port stuff. And it's a really fine example, and they have a really excellent port and uh so i went on vacation and i happened to, i was i said man i'm gonna look at that port stuff as i'm i'm cruising through fort lauderdale but but then i found out something really crazy my my team and i my people from work and i decided to go to key west and that was probably the most fantastic thing i could possibly have done at this time uh, i lived there 20 years ago in South Florida and spent a lot of time in the Keys. It blew up since I left. The work they've done is incredible. I was blown away. They figured out how to make money. There was never any money there. I probably never would have moved to Alaska. I had been sitting on a beach somewhere because I love island life. And that's what it is. And it's, I've come to realize when I was there on vacation, wow. They're doing the same thing we are, except two months ago, they just opened their own international airport. They did all their stuff kind of different than us. They had bridges and stuff, and they're trying to get an airport, and we have an airport, and we're trying to get bridges. So it's quite interesting, but their situation is very similar. And so as I've been researching, I'm, I'm to be quite frank, I'm going to put all of my energies, instead of running for city council and stuff, I'm going to put all my energies into building my snowbird routine now. They have an airport. It's 850 bucks to land there. I'm going to go build another store just like the one on the corner there with my team next winter, and we're going to build a snowbird routine, and we're going to take a page out of the jeweler's book. Um, we're going to try to keep our winners more busy because I'm, 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 I'm essentially just paying for people's jobs over there. And I, this economy doesn't work for me, and I'm one of the most successful here in a year-round economy here. And I can tell you it's not, it's not lucrative enough for me to build a retirement on. So I'm going to kind of go take advantage of this. And when I started looking at their municipal codes, that's when it all kind of hit me. We're doing stuff all wrong. You guys are making all the decisions for us on what happens in that cruise industry, and that's not how they set their stuff up. If you look at it, you'll find out that it all started with committees and stuff. We, we've set up a lot of committees here for different and various reasons, and I think every time I hear the word committee, I kind of cringe. But now I've come to realize that's the heart of where everything starts, and it's how you form that committee. They have cruise committees that are built from the people who work that industry out there. And then they tell you guys what to do and what's the smartest thing. And then you make that decision. And you don't have to get outside engineer reports that don't really matter. Those guys, they'll build you a report for anything if the money's enough. They don't pay for those reports. Their people build that information themselves, and they build their own place. 
It's fantastic. And I think that might be like your resource. It's not that we want to become another city. It's that we need to look for leadership somewhere. And I think it's in those municipal codes. We can look at those as a rough copy of how someone else has done some things. They, they don't have any more land to build on. And they have what they call ROGO permits, which is rapid growth development. I've never seen anything explode so much in my life, and they've learned how to manage that. If we could figure out some of those tricks, we'll probably, when we have to extract money, it's not pretty. People pay for permits for all kinds of stuff. We haven't implemented the right fees and the right stuff. Hell, we don't even do our parking right down here. We're not charging for the right spaces, and we're not prorating our our sticker stuff, and we're not we're not trying to sell our wares here. But if the city doesn't step up, build the jobs, sell the wares, get a piece of that stuff down, there, get a piece of that property, and get a co-op or something, and, and get your hands dirty, and helping create new revenue, you won't have any more money left to take. They'll, you know, when I, guys like me, are, I'm, what I'm looking at is I can go create these jobs in the winter somewhere else. I also think that I can build an Alaskan kind of store and I can sell goods from the people here in Key West during, so during the off season and I can build some revenue for those people, but probably those sales will end up happening there and you won't benefit from it at all. What that looks like is people are actually moving away. And if you don't figure out how to have revenue and something more enticing than than rate hikes, then people won't move here. And we have a we have a much more uh, fragile kind of a cruise thing and a, a feast and famine kind of thing than Key West does. They have 365 days a year, two and a half million of these tourists. They have cruise ships that land every day. We we can learn some things from them, but that's all I wanted to say tonight. Anyway. I know, I know it isn't an easy process and easy, isn't easy to come up with new ideas. So that's all I really wanted to do tonight was offer some new ideas of how we might go into the future. We're going to be keep making these same things, and at some point it just won't work anymore. Got to do new stuff. Thank you, Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Anybody else? That moves us on into um, consent. If there's no objection, I would like to move 7A1 and 2. That's uh, various transfers and then uh, budget transfers all the way. And then uh, KPU item B2. Yes. I move to accept the uh, consent agenda as amended. Thank you. Uh, second. Second. Moving second. Any discussion? Please read the items. Approval of minutes, Special City Council meeting of November 29, 2018. Liquor license renewal for the Potlatch Bar. Exempting the procurement of annual billing software maintenance and support for the Telecommunications Division from the competitive bidding written quotation requirements of the Ketchikan. Municipal Code, COMSOF, exempting the procurement of email networking monitoring and customer services annual billing software maintenance and support for the telecommunications divisions from the competitive written quotation requirements of the Ketchikan Municipal Code, Neo Nova, exempting the procurement of Vera Matrix annual encryption maintenance and support for the telecommunications divisions from competitive bidding and written quotation requirements of the Ketchikan Municipal Code, Dancecom System Group, exempting procurement of programming content for KPU TV from competitive building written quotation requirements of the Ketchikan Municipal Code, National C Cable Television Cooperative, and Verbiquity Inc. Various general government budget, departmental budget transfers, budget transfers for the Solid Waste Division Disposal Services, and purchase of additional retail internet access services from GCI Communication Corporation through the existing IRU agreement. Thank you. Any questions? Hearing none, please call the roll. Bergeron? Aye. Zingy? Yes. Isom? Yes. Flora? Yes. Kiefer? Yes. Page? Yes. Coos? Yes. 
Thank you. That passes seven to nothing. It brings us on into uh, unfinished business. Item A, General Government Resolution Number 18-2716, adopting the budget for the physical year 219, uh, appropriating from the general funds for the physical year 219, deferred from December 31st, 2018. So, uh, Your Honor? Yes. Right. Since I made the original motion, do I just restate that motion? Well, the motion's on the table. The motion's yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we just need to. Okay. So it's under discussion. Anybody else? Seeing none, please call the roll. Goose? Yes. Bergeron? Yes. Zingy? Yes. Isom? Yes. Flora? Yes. Kiefer? Yes. Gage? Yes. That passes. So let's bring us to item B, Catch Can Public Utilities, resolution number 18 27 17, adopting the budget for the year 219, appropriating from the Catch Can Public Utilities Enterprise Fund for the physical year 219, deferred from December 13, 2018. Motion's on the table already. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Ziggy? Yes. Isom? Yes. Flora? Yes. Kiefer? Yes. Gage? Yes. Who's? Yes. Bergeron? Yes. Thank you very much. That brings us down to new business. Um, we've uh, already put under consent the general government issues. The one that uh, is left is the amendment number five to LTE uh, in Rural America Master Agreement between the City of Ketchikan DBA, Ketchikan Public Utilities, and Salco Partnership DBA Verizon Wireless. And um, there is an executive session that has been scheduled to discuss uh, items that are relevant to this. Uh, and I would, I would soon listen to that in the executive session before we go to the motion. If there's no uh, problem with that, we'll defer it until after the executive session. Thank you very much. That brings us down to vouchers, which we have none. Oh, 7B3, yes, we have a new one. Uh, request for the business item 7B3 is exempt of the procurement of the Gravner MK oil mister detector system from the competitive bidding. Do I have a motion? Hey, Your Honor. Yes, Dick. Pursuant to subparagraph 6 of section 6312050A of the Ketchikan Municipal Code, I move the City Council exempt the procurement of a Gravener MK7 oil mister, mist detector OMD system from competitive bidding requirements of the Ketchikan Municipal Code. Authorize the general manager to procure such an oil mist detector system from oil mist measurements, etc., at a cost not to exceed $18,646.16. Approve the funding from the Electrical Division's 2018 Operating Equipment Capital Account and direct the general manager to execute the contract documents on behalf of the City Council. Second. Move and second. Carl, so this this is on which bag three? This, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a piece of equipment that we currently have, but it's very outdated. Um, it basically, it's something that allows us to make sure the unit operates safely in a productive manner. If you want further explanation, I would defer to Mr. Donato. Um, I think it would be worthwhile since this is the one that uh, we had issues with. We put it back together, and so um, you and Mr. Minum can speak to that if you wish, uh, just so, so we know what's going on sure. here. Andy Bonato, uh, Electric Division Manager. Uh, so the Mark III that we have, we've pieced that together for a number of years. And let me just tell you what it does. So in the crane case, when we get a lot of blow-by, with that engine, we go through a lot of oil. So when the oil mist gets to a particular density, this equipment detects it and then shuts down a unit so you don't get an explosion. Uh, now, whether we had an explosion or not that took out the piston and blew it out the explosion port, it could have been, or maybe it could have been detected. 
Um, so at any rate, what we want to do is want to make sure that that system works reliably. We don't have the parts, can't get the parts to make it reliable. It doesn't, it does, it's not sampling properly in all the, in all the spaces in the, in the uh, uh, crankcase cavity. And so uh, that has now been left by, uh, by, by later uh, evolution. And uh, now that Mark III has been replaced now with a Mark VII. So the Mark VIs and the VIIs are, are, are supported by the company. So I think it's time for us to migrate to that to that uh, to that uh, instrument, right? And so what this thing looks like, it's a machine, and it it does some uh, some sampling. It's got tentacles that go in all the different chambers and constantly sample, and it's looking for a particular density of uh, of, of oil mist, and then of course gives you the alarm and shuts the unit down appropriately if it gets too high. Is that consistent? That's consistent. Yes. And in addition, the machine will not operate without this. Service. Well, my, my question really is, is, is it just um, specific to this machine, to, or do all the machines have this? No, this is specific just to that uh, Fairbanks Morris 18-cylinder okay. So it's not, it's not in the other? Okay. It's not. Okay. The Fairbanks Morris will go through more oil than you care to believe. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? They only sell them in one place? Yeah, there's only one distributor. <clears throat> So that's why we're asking for the exemption. Okay. That's, that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's millions of dollars if you're going to replace this unit, right? And so this is a small cost. I realize that some of this stuff has got an incredible price, but it's a real small fraction of the replacement cost of this huge machine. It's a 9,000 horsepower machine. And so uh, you know, we feel it's money well spent. I believe, I believe we do. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't have the same issue in the other engine. So but just this one more than that. Any other questions? Hearing none, please call the roll. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Jeremy. Yes. Flora? Yes. Kuiper? Yes. Gage? Yes. Coos? Yes. Bergeron? Yes. Zingy? Yes. That passes. That comes to vouchers, which we have none, and to manager's report. What do you have for us tonight, Carl? I have a few, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we laid on the table tonight a uh, brief report relative to your previous discussion on the disposi disposition of fire station number one, the old fire station. Uh, we summarized what we took from the discussion, and we're seeking clarification on one point. Uh, that is whether... The council wants to include in the solicitation of the building uh, documentation by potential purchaser, purchasers that they have the financial wherewithal uh, to repurpose the building uh, as they intend. That was a subject that was brought up in previous discussions. It was unclear to us whether you wanted to include that uh, based on your discussions Monday night. If you can advise us how you'd like us to proceed, then the city attorney and public works director can move towards finalizing uh, the necessary ordinance. What's your recommendation? It's an old building with a lot of issues. I'd hate to see someone uh, acquire it who turns out not to have the, the capabilities to do as they represent get in there, make the building worse than it is, and then we get it back for uh, back for failure, payment of taxes, that type of thing. It's a tough decision, I, uh, I know, but we're, we're seeking council direction. It can go either way. <coughs> I would Mr. Oh, Mr. Berger, Carl, if you were going to go that right, how, how would we do that? You, you would have to put in some type of disclosures as to assets that they have that they can direct towards what they want to do to the building. Obviously, I don't think we're going to you know, require them to post a bond or something like that, but uh, at least it would give you information as to how serious they are about doing what they say they're going to do. Would those disclosures be a public document? I think it could go either way. I, I would 
tend to think that if you were going to make them public, uh, it might inhibit certain people from coming forward. So I would recommend that they be kept under a privileged and confidential status. Is there any consensus of how they feel about that? Uh, I know that when somebody's going to come to purchase it, they're probably going to have to go out and get a bank loan or something like that. So they'll be dealing with the bank in regards to the actual purchase, but then it get into the remodel or refitting for whatever they're going to do is going to be another another issue. Mr. Berger, Your Honor, um, I, I think that acquiring this building, going into a competitive bidding environment, and securing a loan, I think is is enough security for me. I think that this, you know, whoever comes forward to try to buy this thing is already going, has already gone through <laughs> a lot of hurdles. And so if um, they can, you know, secure the financing to get this thing, I think that <laughs> yeah, they can, that's good enough for me. You buy it and you own it. So and I, I, I would be comfortable not doing that. Anybody else? We have four hands in regards to what Mr. Berger on set. All right, so what's the other option? <laughs> Does anybody want to throw something out there? Or you, do you want to um, continue with the language that's in here to require them to at least submit something? Yes. I think I'd like it to be confidential, though. I don't think we want it public, but I kind of feel that it's important that we know they can make the repairs to the building. I, I just don't want us to get it back, and um, I'd be comfortable. I'm not comfortable if there's if it comes back where it has to be public. Uh, I'm not comfortable with that at all. But if there's a way that it can be confidential. But I've no, I don't know what that looks like. So, if, if that's the direction of the council, we can come back with language. Uh, we'll come back and do it. Here, here comes the judge. <laughs> <laughs> he, he needs walk up music, doesn't he? Right, he does. He, like, he really does. Right really in the middle of the time like, to again confess ignorance. I don't know if it's <laughs> even confidential or not. I mean, it would be part of an evaluating process and a chance to, you know, a, a big contest and. Whoever decided your financial information is better than the next guy's. I, I, I just can't tell you tonight, Council Member. Okay. Dick, did you have something? Yeah, I was going to kind of echo what Judy said. I, I think we need something that demonstrates they can meet what they say they're going to do with the building. And we could say just you buy it, take it, and get away. But I can see that building, if you're not careful, somebody buying it. And it sits there for another five years while they play around with it, and it's just going to fall apart even more. So, I think that there should be something, and, and I would prefer it not have to go in the public to show here's where my financing's coming from. I just got to demonstrate to say management that, that the, the capability and the money is there. And that's on, on that one there, that's kind of the way I feel about it. I've got a couple other things I'd like to say, but let's finish this one first. I, I'm racking in my mind to try to think of any other situations that were handled similarly in either of the governments here. I can't think of any. Can you, Carl? The only one that might have come into play and I wasn't involved with it would have been the sell, sale of the telecommunications division. I'm sure that prospective buyers had to document that they had the ability to complete the transaction that they were proposing on. Mm -hmm. and it seems to me we also, even in the more recent discussions, there, there was a lot, a lot of the, that was still kept as, as proprietary information. And we, we weren't allowed to. Well, I mean, you, ha you have one tonight in terms of the uh, amendment to the Verizon agreement that we're going to review in executive session. You know, I, I can try to work with the attorney to come up with something and we can bring it back. Maybe that would be the best way to. Yeah about it and report back. It's, it's going to be 
couple meetings before we get to that point anyway. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's so one of the other um, items I'd like uh, to council to look at, and it's not just related to just this piece of property, but when we, as a city of Ketchikan, work with a nonprofit and deed property to them for um, little or nothing, um, I think that there should be some PILT payment lieu of taxes attached to that. Similar to, I think KIC pays PILT under issue. And the idea is that we're going to dispose of this property in a manner that we're hoping to get it back on the tax roll. So um, even if it goes to a nonprofit, and that could be a negotiated item or, or uh, a price, but I think that there should be some payment lieu of taxes on these things. And I, I don't know what the rest of the council feels about that. Nick? Well, I I agree with you, I think, from the way you worded it, but there was three things in my mind that as I sat there and evaluate the purchaser of that, and I think maybe, I don't know whether this would go into criteria or not, but one, they paid a property tax, because otherwise, worth it go. Two, they collect and pay sales tax. That building has the potential to generate a lot of taxes for the city in a number, in, in those two ways there. And the other one is the number of year-round paid employees they have. I mean, if you look at some one of the proposals, there's considerable employment involved there. One of them didn't have any, and one of them you couldn't evaluate. So I think somehow or other we need to think about what sort of evaluation criteria are going to be on this thing, if we can even do it. I don't know. But in my mind, we need to be dealing with trying to make sure that that property down there is productive. Yeah. Well. I think we also need to remember that when we're working with nonprofits and nonprofits do a service to this community and they cover areas that we don't necessarily want to, then some of those areas that they cover bring our costs down. And they do, whether they're the arts or for uh, seniors or people with disabilities or any other um, wellness department, they, um, there is a tax. I mean, people pay for services, they pay for art, they pay for projects, they pay for, and um, the revenue that's brought in from those artists and those um, different venues and are all things that we get as a community. And it is, I think that sometimes we vilify our nonprofits as if they do nothing but get something for free. Well, if anything, they give us something in return. And it is probably better um, than anything that sometimes we give them as a city and a borough. And that's, I, I don't like to vilify us, but sometimes it, it's very hard to sit here and, and being a person who works with nonprofits, who sits on boards, who participates in these activities, it is the one reason I moved back to Ketchikan. It is the only community that I've been in that has what we have. And I hate to see that lost, but I also hate to see it vilified. And um, the community supports it. They raise money from the community, um, and so when we um, participate in the monies that we give to them, that's federal funding that comes in, that's state funding that comes in, and I know the, the coffers from those two areas are dropping like flies because to a lot of our bigger entities, it's not important. But those are the agencies that uh, keep us healthy. Um, Yes, sir. Judy. Um, you know, I, I think about that payment in lieu of taxes, and I'm thinking about the homeless shelter. We give them money to stay open, and then we'd be collecting taxes. I, I think it would have to be a case-by-case -case basis, I guess, but I feel like we'd be paying ourselves in some of these cases. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know how it would work. I have to give it some more thought, I guess. Sure. 
the last discussion we had left all interested parties in the game, so to speak, whether they wanted to purchase it, lease it, or ask for it to be granted to them. Nobody's locked out right now. We're going to offer it for surplus. Councilmember Gage makes an excellent point, and I think it's illustrated with the Crypt building. We had somebody later in the game come to offer to buy it, and this body decided that it was in the community's best interest to work with them to see if there could be a block grant and have that building go to a nonprofit. Every property is different. Every scenario is different. Right now, the nonprofits, unless I'm mistaken, are on an equal footing with someone who wants to buy it. When we look at number of staff, sales tax, they may generate um, property tax, things like that. That's exactly the criteria that we'll be analyzing on a case-by-case -case basis. If we, you know, it might be a very simple decision if only one or two parties come forward. If, if we have 15 people with varying ideas, then we'll have to sort through those details at the time. Um, just to step back for a moment when we talk about uh, the criteria to show some financial wherewithal, it's exactly what the bank's going to do to someone who's going to go get a bank loan, right? Why does the bank do that? They do it to protect themselves. So why wouldn't we? And again, we can define the criteria. We want to see financial wherewithal of X. It doesn't have to be unreasonable. It doesn't have to be onerous. Maybe in the purchaser's best interest to not have to have a building be lost from out from under them. But I do think to keep... But I, I, I'm not comfortable with making a potential purchases, purchaser's finances public seems to be a bit much. I don't know what we can do, but that's that's a little uncomfortable. Thank you. Thank you. Doesn't a bank tell you if you have a financial wherewithal to buy something? If I'm going to sell a house to somebody and then they go to the bank, that's all I'm ever looking for. Um, you know, I, we're all talking about wanting to get this process going and keep, you know, adding hurdles to it. So that's all I have. Thank you. Carl, do you have enough direction? I think we can get a start and we'll come back and seek further oh, direction. Good. What else do you have in the report? It's my intent to schedule an executive session for the January 3rd meeting uh, to review Judge Holland's decision regarding the litigation between industry and Juno. Uh, I've talked to representatives from Juno as well as industry. I think it would be appropriate to update the council uh, regarding those issues and how it may affect us going forward with our port development plans. So that, that would be coming. Um, at that meeting, it is also my intent at this moment to have my evaluation on, the, on that agenda. And then I'm asking the council you're available to consider a special meeting for January 10th. Uh, I would like to have Mr. Ahamil from Bramella Ahamil return and update the council as to where they are relative to uh, port birth alternative configurations. And we'll probably also discuss some issues that seem to be in the work regarding uh, what may be further mandates that might be imposed on us by federal authorities that mm -hmm. could also have a play uh, into that discussion. So I'd like to know if the majority of the council will be available on January 10th. Good. I'll go ahead and uh, schedule that. And other than wishing the, the council uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So, City Clerk's file? No, no. City Attorney's file? Nothing wrong. Future agenda item? Or, oh, not so. Mayor and Council Thomas Dick. Yeah, probably a couple things. First of all, Merry Christmas because we won't be back. Happy New Year. Uh, Second, there's been a couple of comments by us and by 
the public about uh, we need to nail the cruise industry. And I think, and that's sort of the way I took it. And we want to, we need to look at where their impact is on us before we say we're going to nail them because we need a lot of money. If you think about the big buses, they use the main highway and DOT takes care of it. Uh, they use our streets to a certain extent. Most of the time it's the stores and the sidewalks, and that is an expense. Uh, and maybe the portion, somebody could probably tell me, but the portion of sales tax we get from them is probably close to, jump on me, Carl, if I'm wrong, half. It's significant. It's significant. Probably $5 million plus dollars. And, and I think we, we need to work with them to have them help us. And, it, and it's pretty clear on that, but let's don't start throwing it out there. Let's nail them up against the wall, because that's just the way I took it. Um, anyway, uh, I think we need to be careful. We need to work with them. And I had another one, but it went that way, so we'll get it'll catch up with it another. Thank you. Can we? Yeah. Um, I hope everybody has a great Christmas. You might get a vacation in the next week. I'll see, see you next year. But um, yeah, I guess it looks like next year and the year after is going to be a lot of work. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Just a reminder that the governor called for flags to be at half staff on January 1st because of the tragic deaths of Skagway's mayor and her mother today or yesterday, was it? Yesterday. yesterday. Thank you. Judy. Uh, yes, Jana Lee and Lacey and I at the AML conference. Um, got to know the mayor of Skagway. We went out to dinner, a really wonderful lady, and um, my condolences to her and her family, or to their family. Um, it's been a great year. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the new year. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody, and Happy New Year. Hey, just Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and Happy Holidays. Just real briefly to Councilman Bacuse's comments, um, I don't want to nail anybody to the wall in regards to this tourism thing, but, and I know I'm the one that advanced the motion, but we've now asked the locals to take a bigger participation in, in, in their own infrastructure. Mr. Strasburg brought it up. I've been working on some things that will come up in the new year, I'm sure after we meet with BNA especially. The impact to our community's infrastructure by the tourism industry is significant. I got some data from the city today, it looks like somewhere between four and a half and five million dollars was generated in tourism related sales tax. It's really hard to get exact just by the way they categorize the, the criteria. Um, we have a $21 million capital improvement budget for 2019. We're going to have 1.3 million people pass through town. I sit on the Ports and Harbors Board, and I've listened to some of the folks that are direct beneficiaries of the tourism industry, and, and God bless them, they made the decision to get in there and, and take the risk and do the work, and I'm glad they're successful. But I don't think we'll be able to really say that tourism is good for Ketchikan until the folks that aren't ringing the till that can look out their kitchen window and see a new sidewalk going in front of their home because this is their town too. That's when tourism, that's when the cruise industry will be a success in Ketchikan. And I'm looking forward to that discussion. Beyond that, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you. Um, great discussion tonight. Uh, you know, good public comments in regards to uh, the struggle that our local businesses have, especially when it's a seasonal business and how they, they manage through the winters. Um, 
Again, I also uh, express the thanks for all that our nonprofits do. Uh, in regard to the sales tax issue, you know, there was talk about um, native corporations being able to put properties in trusts, and as we keep bringing properties off the rolls, uh, whether we, we make them available uh, to nonprofits or not, and these are larger pieces of property, that can be an issue. So that could be a negotiated item, uh, and everything is different. I understand that. But I think it's something for us to think about. Um, I'd also like to thank Mary Hobson for her years of service down at the KPU Customer Service. Um, she's been a, a great employee, and, and I know Mary, and, and uh, I'd like to thank her for her, her time in the city. And again, like everybody else, I wish uh, everybody a Merry Christmas and a happy, safe New Year. So that brings us to um, our executive session. And that is a uh, request for an executive session uh, review and discussion of amendment number five to LTE in Rural America Master Agreement. So I have a motion. Oh, yeah, we have one for Leighton Dawson, too. Excuse me. Let's do that one first. Request for exception. Oh, no, uh, this year. Litigate. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. We're pulling that one. Oh, okay. you have to do okay. Leighton Dawson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see? I'm ahead of the game. You get a Christmas present. At least. So that leaves us with. You're uh, on. Yes. I move the City Council find that consistent with the General Manager's memorandum dated December 8, 2018. Is it in the City's best interest to consider such matters in executive session? And the Council go into executive session under KMC 204025A1 and 3 to review and discuss those aspects of Amendment Number 5 to LTE and Rural America Master Agreement, which contain information required to be confidential pursuant to the Alaska Trade Secrets Act and matters that the immediate knowledge of which could clearly have an adverse impact on the finances of the city. Second. Then moved and seconded. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Flora? Yeah. Pfeiffer? Yeah. Gage? Yeah. Coos? Yeah. Bergeron? Yes. Zingy? Yes. Tyson? Yes. Right. With that, we will read the executive. And thank you guys for wearing the, the, the festive hat. <laughs> it made me feel better. Session. Um, we've discussed uh, item B1, and uh, we're needing a motion. Motion to adjourn till next year. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Yeah. 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 And authorize the general manager to execute the amendment on behalf of the city council. Second. Second. Third. Third. Fourth. Yes. All right. <laughs> We're moving second. <laughs> Any time. discussion? Please call the roll. <clears throat> Gage. Yes. Coos. Yes. Bergeron. Yes. Zingy. Yes. Isom. Yes. Flora. Yes. Kaiser. Yes. Uh, having no other business. Move to adjourn your room. Pull next year. Stand adjourned. Some of you guys have turned down and like it's way too hot. The third. What's that? The third. My mic is super hot. Oh, that's so.